Monero Core GUI Wallet for Windows. If you go to getmonero.org, you will see under the latest news that Monero Core GUI Beta 1 has been released, the first beta of the long awaited Monero Core GUI. So click on that link and that will take you to a page where you can download the Monero Core GUI. If you scroll down, you'll see official download links for Windows 64 bit, Mac OS 64 bit, Linux 64 and 32 bits. So I'm going to click on the Windows 64 bit link. That'll bring up a download window to save the file. I already have mine downloaded to the left as you can see, Monero GUI Win64. So I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to go up to the top, getting started, all Monero downloads. And at the bottom you can see it says if you'd prefer to use a blockchain bootstrap instead of syncing up from scratch, you can use this link. So you can click on that if you do want to download the blockchain bootstrap. However, it says it is typically much faster to sync from scratch. So in this video, we're just going to allow the wallet to sync from scratch. At the end of the video, I'll show you how to import the bootstrap blockchain if you do want to use that. So I'll cancel that download. I'll go and unzip or extract the archive. Once that's done, I'll go into the folder and into the folder in there. If we scroll down, we'll see Monero Blockchain Export, Import, Monero D, and the Monero Wallet GUI. So I'm going to double click on the Monero Wallet GUI. This will bring up the Welcome to Monero screen where I can create a new wallet, restore a wallet from 25 Word Mnemonic Seed, or open a wallet from file. I can also change the custom daemon address to a remote address if I want to. I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on Create a New Wallet. Here I can give my wallet a name and I can see my 25 word mnemonic seed. So I'm going to go ahead and edit my name to crypto test. And at the bottom it says this seed is very important to write down and keep secret. It is all you need to back up and restore your wallet. So make sure that you write this down offline off of your computer. You might want to make a couple copies, keep them in secret safe places. Don't let anyone know what it is or where it is. I just take a photo of this and then hide that photo in some secret spots. So make sure that you don't let anyone know what it is. This is all that you need to get your wallet, to get into your wallet, to restore your wallet. Somebody can steal all of your coins if they have this. So I'll go ahead and I'll click on the next arrow. This brings me to the give your wallet a password page. Note this password cannot be recovered. If you forget it, then the wallet will have to be restored from its 25 word mnemonic seed. Enter a secure password. I'm just going to enter a fairly easy password here of medium difficulty. You're going to want to use one of the highest difficulty. So make sure you choose a hard to guess password, very difficult password. Try and get that progress bar all the way up to high. I'll go ahead and click on the next arrow to get to the next screen. You're all set up. I'm all done. You can see your details there. I'll go and click on use Monero. This opens up the wallet and it says the daemon doesn't appear to be running. So I'm going to click on start daemon. Now the daemon does sometimes take a long time to start up, so just be patient and eventually it should start. I do find that the daemon actually does work a little bit better in Linux than in Windows. So now the daemon is finally started. Here is the first page, the first tab, the send tab. You can type in an amount of Monero that you want to send if you have some Monero in your wallet. Or you can click on or all to send all of it. You can see the transaction priority menu where you can select low, medium, or high transaction priority. This is the speed that your transaction will be sent on on the blockchain. Right now, low is fast enough. The blockchain is not that busy, so you shouldn't need to select medium or high. Low should still produce a fairly fast transaction. The next setting is the privacy level. You can see a sliding bar under privacy level with settings of low, medium, or high. The privacy sliding bar allows you to choose a level of mixin. The GUI wallet presets represent the following mixin values. Low equals 4, medium equals 8, and high equals 25. Underneath that, you'll see address where you can paste an address to send Monero to. You can also paste in a payment ID if necessary. It's optional. 
and you can type in a description. I'm going to type in to John. The other option at the bottom right of the description line is Sweep Unmixable. If you're new to using a Monero wallet, you won't have to worry about that. RCT kind of takes care of that problem, so we'll just forget about that. The next tab is the Address Book tab. So I'll click on Address Book. Here you can add addresses and names and store them in your wallet. So I'm going to go to My Monero, log in, and grab a wallet address from here. I'm going to copy this address. and paste it into the address book. I'll go back and I'll just take the payment ID, just as an example, I'll copy that and paste it into the address book under payment ID. You can then give your address a name or description. So I'll just type in John My Monero, and then I'll click add. This will add it to my address book so I can easily send to this address in the future. The next tab is the Receive tab. Here you'll see your wallet address, your integrated address, and your payment ID, which you can change by clicking on Generate. You can type in an amount. The QR code will change as you type in an amount, or click on Generate Payment ID. And you'll also see Tracking. If you click on Help, it says, This is a simple sales tracker. Click Generate to create a random payment ID for a new customer. Let your customer scan that QR code to make a payment. If that customer has software which supports QR code scanning, this page will automatically scan the blockchain and TX pool for incoming transactions using this QR code. If you input an amount, it will also check that incoming transactions total up to that amount. It is up to you whether to accept unconfirmed transactions or not. It is likely they'll be confirmed in short order, but there is still a possibility they might not. So for larger values, you may want to wait for one or more confirmations. The next tab is the History tab. Here you can search through your transactions to find certain transactions. You can filter by date, to and from. If you click on Advanced Filtering, you can select All Transactions, Sent Transactions, Receive Transactions, and you can type in an amount from and to. You can also sort your transactions through Payment ID, Date, Block Height, or Amount. Next is the Advanced tab. Under the Advanced tab, we'll see Check Payment and Sign Verify. I'll click on Check Payment. Here it says, Verify that a third party has made a payment by supplying the recipient address, the transaction ID, the secret transaction key supplied by the sender. If a payment had several transactions, then each must be checked and the results combined. Next, I'll go ahead and click on the Sign Verify tab. Here we can create a message and sign it or we can sign a file so that it can be verified to who we send it to that it did come from us. I'll type in a message here to John. If I click on sign it'll sign that message and give me a signature. I'll select a file and click on sign that'll give me a signature for that file. Underneath that in verify a message I can enter the message and then verify it using the certain signature. So I'll go back and copy my signature for that message. I'll paste it into the signature verification box. I'll type in the message. And I'll go to my receive page. I'll copy my address. Go back to sign verify and paste in my address. And click on verify says this is a good signature and verifies that that message did come from me. I can do the same with the file. I'll sign the file, take that signature, paste it into the verification box. I'll select the file. Click verify and it says this is a good signature. It verifies that that is the file that I sent. Next is the Settings tab, the last tab. Here you can see your mnemonic seed. If you click on Show Seed, 
you'll be prompted to type in your password. Once you've typed in your password, it will show you your mnemonic key. So if you need to copy this down for whatever reason, if you can't find the copies you made earlier, this is where you can get it. You can also change the daemon address if you want to change it to a remote host. You can click on Close Wallet. That'll take you back to the start screen where you had the option to create a new wallet, restore from your mnemonic key, or restore from file. Next is Manage Daemon. You can stop the daemon, start the daemon, or view the log. Here, if we open up the log, we can watch the blockchain synchronize. You can also see in the bottom left corner of the wallet, synchronizing blocks. It also shows you your block synchronizing, what block you're on, and the total block. So that's about it. That's pretty much all you need to know to use the wallet to get started using the Monero GUI wallet. Just make sure that you let the daemon fully synchronize with the blockchain before you actually start using it. Now I'll go ahead and show you how to import a blockchain if you decided to download that bootstrap blockchain or if you have a blockchain backed up from an existing database. Here is a blockchain that I have from an existing database. So I'll copy it into my GUI wallet folder and I'm going to use the Monero blockchain import function to do this. So I'm going to hold shift, right click and then open a command prompt. In the command prompt, I'm going to type in monero-blockchain-import.exe space dash dash input dash file space blockchain.raw and then hit enter. This will scan the blockchain for me and then start to import it into my database. This does take a fairly long time and that's why it's probably just easier to synchronize the wallet from scratch. Both of them do take a fairly long time. Now it's done scanning, so it's going ahead and reading the blockchain from the bootstrap file. You can see how long this takes. Right now we're just at 2,000 and it's got to go past a million. So I hope you like this GUI wallet. I hope you use it. I hope you liked the video. I hope it helped. And thanks for watching.